I am Kautilya Pandit and I have a question for you. When you're sleeping and the time is near about 7 or 8 and you're like in your bed and you want to sleep more and mama just open the curtain and your knee and your sleep goes really bad and like your sleep is disturbed then what is that thing that disturbs your sleep? Is that mama? She's not shouting then what's the reason? It's actually the light. What is actually light? Where is it coming from? Okay so the light is coming from the sun. Sun is pretty huge. It's very far. And how is light coming from it? We we also have another mate here. We have Proxima Centauri, the nearest star or the Sirius star and light is always emitted from them. We can see at night, but how does it happen? How does light come from there? Then this question would be answered in this video. I will be telling you that what is the reason? What is the reaction that is undergoing in that planet in in that star actually that that is resulting in a creation of energy and also heat and also light then what is actually happening it let's take sun or let's take any kind of star we have a star or a sun so we have sun and what actually is happening in sun inside sun a reaction is happening and that reaction is known as nuclear fusion reaction to tell nuclear fusion reaction in simple terms what actually happens is that we have one hydrogen atom we have another hydrogen atom they both combine and from a helium atom along with a neutrino you must not be knowing about neutrino but google it and learn about it we also have a hydrogen hydrogen gives a helium and a neutrino and also a lot of energy and a lot of light from it so this reaction is actually happening in nuclear fusion reaction so it's happening inside any kind of star and if, and if this nuclear fusion reaction is undergoing it means that the star is actually living or it has energy so i think from now you understood that what is actually nuclear fusion reactions two hydrogen one helium one neutrino a lot of energy and this reaction is completed in billions of years but now you must be having a question that energy or light or photons are created in billions of years then i get light at every instance of my life at every instance of day i can see light coming and what is actually this thing if light is just created in billions of years then how is light coming every time so it is that the reaction is completed at every time so it's completed at every second so uh, at every instance so the photons or the light is being generated at every point of time so that's how we get a lot of light at every time So now I thought that I think that you understood what is actually nuclear fusion reaction and nuclear fusion reaction helps in creating energy and this is the way that stars have their own energy while the planets they don't even if we consider the moon so imagine that we have a big moon here and moon gives light at night but what's that reason because behind moon we have another we have our sun which gives light and actually moon reflects that light and that's why moon seems to be a luminous object planets don't create the light because they don't undergo a, pro a process of nuclear fusion but stars do undergo a process of nuclear fusion and upon this basis of this reaction of nuclear fusion i will continue and i'll tell you that what actually this thing has importance in the field of star what importance does this reaction has in the life of a star you know that nuclear fusion reaction creates light and energy and upon this basis of this reaction i will tell you that what is the life of a star or what is the life cycle of a star we have a dust cloud we have a very big cloud of dust very very big consider let's see a nebula and that dust cloud is known as a nebula we have a nebula imagine a horseshoe nebula or any kind of nebula we have a nebula then this nebula is transformed into a protostar Nebula can be considered as an immature child who is not in the world that can be considered as a nebula so it's a cloud of it's a cloud of dust and gases and then after millions and billions of years that nebula it gets 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 so it's compacted and it forms a thing known as a protostar a protostar can be uh, considered as a baby star or a small star so there's a protostar and then after evolution and maturation that protostar is converted into a star a healthy star like sun which is at its maturity first nebula then protostar then star 
and then the race begins the real race of death and also of aging so a uh, matured star like let's consider our sun which is a g2 type main sequence star so it is a medium star and it's a yellow star so it is in its mature state and what actually happens is that if a star is very very massive it is much big if it is so big that you can't even imagine let's see a normal star imagine my fist is a star imagine this is a star this size is a star and if we have another star very big star such kind of star then the bigger star can be a red giant a red super giant and a small star can be a red giant so what actually happens is that nuclear fusion reaction is happening in a mature star and that nuclear fusion reaction and for that nuclear fusion reaction we need a raw material that is hydrogen and that hydrogen is now less so it's actually getting lesser and lesser and lesser and if we have a less product then what actually happens is that a react is that uh, the if the product is if the reactant is less then the product will also be less so the light the light that is emitting from that star would be very low as compared to the previous or as compared to a mature star so that the star would expand and it would become giant it would become big and that's where the the name comes from red giant normally the star is yellow or red or blue and what actually happens is that after its expansion after it's getting old after it's getting older after it becomes a red giant why is it red first it was red, yellow then it becomes red because its intensity decreases so it expands if it is too big it is red super giant if it's not so big if it's red giant taking the case of the small one what actually happens in that small one after red giant the nuclear fusion is almost till death like it's the reactant is very less and it's actually going 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 and then what actually happens is that after this nuclear fusion after this stage of red giant a small star it gets converted into white dwarf or red dwarf comparative it's and it's dependent on the mass of the star or the type of the star there are black dwarf stars white dwarf stars red dwarf stars and before these dwarf stars are created a stage we get as a planetary nebula so this is how a star ends this is how a small star ends nebula protostar mature star red giant and in the end we have a white dwarf red dwarf or a black dwarf considering the case of a red super giant a very big star so red super giant it gets converted into a thing known as supernova if it's very big a supernova and a supernova gets explosion it's an explosion and undergoes in which it gets exploded and and in that explosion we can see the entire universe it's like so much luminous it will so much luminous luminosity is spread it from that we know that after gamma ray burst after gamma ray burst a supernova burst a big supernova burst is the most powerful energy that we can see in the universe after gamma ray burst what is the category of the uh, big star the category for a big star is if it is more than 8 times the mass of our sun so if it is 8 to 15 times the mass of our sun it will be converted into a neutron star and if it is more than 15 times the mass of the sun it would be converted into black hole and for your uh, for your knowledge the life cycle of the black hole is greater than the life cycle of the new universe itself so it's so big and it gets so much compacted before the supernova was bigger than you can imagine imagine this was the star this was this was the star this was the red super giant and this is the supernova and then what actually happens if it is transformed transformed into a black hole this all is compacted into lesser and lesser and lesser such a small space imagine we have a very big star it will be converted into a black hole of 5 uh, sec kilometer radius or a 5 meter radius also this is too less and this is why the gravitational field of a black hole is much greater than that of star and it's all dependent on the nuclear fusion reaction if the nuclear fusion reactions reactants are less it means the star is getting the star is getting older and this is how it works so this was the life cycle of the star hope you understood and the mass of the black holes and the neutron star is so great that you can't even imagine even a spoonful of a, imagine that we have a neutron star and if we take a spoon out of it and that spoon would be 3 billion tons just imagine and if we take a white dwarf star that would be 2000 tons 
So, a black hole is much much dense and much much massive than anything you can see. So, I hope that this was knowledgeable and I will continue in another video and until then, a bye bye and hope you understood a life cycle of a star and also what is neutrino, what is nuclear fusion reaction, what is the life cycle of a star. So, thank you everybody. With this, I'd like to end the session. Signing off here, it's me, Karalya Pandit.